What's up guys? Welcome back to Fancy Goldfish Fanatics. Today we're going to be looking at microscopes and how to correctly scrape your fish and test them for parasites. So stay tuned to find out more. Hey Fanatics family, welcome back. Remember to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you can keep up to date with our exciting future uploads. Also, you're probably already part of the family. I say this every single video. If you aren't part of it, hit the link in the description and join our Facebook group. You'll have access to 7,000 members, um, competitions that we run all the time, lots of great advice from newbies to experienced hobbyists and overall it's just a lovely place to be to share your goldfish. So today's video is going to be all on microscopes, how to use them, how to identify parasites and what to look for. As you may know if you watched my previous video, if you haven't then what are you doing? Go and watch it. Um, so we actually had a fish death which was really sad. Um, but we've treated the tank and so far so good. All the rest of the fish are okay and they're doing well. Um, we have a couple of fish that still aren't acting quite right. You may notice that the colour of the tank water isn't green anymore because it's been a few days since I did the treatment. Um, and luckily all the other fish are still doing well. But I just wanted to take the opportunity to do a few mucus scrapes to check for any potential parasites. Now I'm 99% sure that the fish won't have any parasites because they haven't showed any of the usual symptoms like flashing, flicking, however you want to call it, where they turn on their side and scratch on the bottom, I prefer to call it um, flashing. Um, also you may notice their pectoral fins will move quite quickly as if they're trying to shake something off them or maybe their gills will be moving rapidly and they'll be breathing quite heavily um, possibly if they've got an infestation of gill flukes also this is going to be the last video that i've got the background poster on um, we finally finished the new logo i know i've been saying this for ages um, and also I've been saying it for ages that we finally got the new pond as well. Um, but this is going to be the last video. We're going to get a new logo printed soon. Um, and I'm going to make it a bit higher quality than this one. It's going to have some cardboard backing and be a bit more robust. Because you probably noticed this one is wrecked already. Because the fish love to splash everything around the tank. Including the walls and obviously the poster. Um, obviously, and the carbon's still out um, because I haven't done the water change just yet. That's going to happen tomorrow. Um, so yeah, we got the new logo that's going to be printed soon. But back onto today's video. So the first bit of the equipment we need is the microscope. So here's my microscope. I picked this up about four years ago off eBay, and it is probably the best piece of kit that I have ever used, not this microscope in particular, but just having a microscope. So firstly, you have the scope, pretty basic. Um, it's just got three different magnifying lenses and then also I can change the top lens. Now, although I did a science degree, I can't for the life of me remember what any part of the microscope is, <laughs> but that doesn't matter because it still does the job. I do remember that you have this main stage where we're going to put our glass slide. Um, just like these here. So these are the glass slides. So they are basically just clear pieces of glass. Hopefully you can see that. We've got a range of them in here. And then we will have our cover lenses. Cover lens? Cover slips. And that's it which will go over the top of the mucus to sandwich that mucus nice and thin so we can look clearly through it to see if we've got any parasites. Then also you'll need something to scrape that mucus off the fish without damaging the fish or the scales. 
This is a piece of plastic that I cut out from those um, non-bio um, washing machine tablets. Uh, it's quite sturdy, but it's also got a bit of flex in it. You can also use an old credit or debit card as well. And then I'll just brush this along the fish um, to collect some mucus, and then I can wipe that onto the glass slide. Um, then also you've got your power supply because we need some light to shine up through the bottom and the side which will make identifying the parasites much easier for us. So first job is going to be to get one of the fish out. I'm going to choose the calico which is the one that's been hanging around the top of the water um, more often because that's the fish that looks most sick to me. Um, so we're going to check that one out and hopefully it's not going to have any parasites but obviously if it does we can identify them, we can treat accordingly and we can also show you guys. So let's get the fish out and let's start doing some mucus scrapes. So I've got my little scraper and I've got the blue bowl here. So first job we're just going to turn the pumps off so there's no rippling um, on the water and then we need to get our fish into the bowl so I'm just going to fill the bowl up with water and then get our target fish oh it's nice and warm so this is the fish we're going to be scraping so into the bowl here nice. so what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the fish upside down I'm going to wet this slightly and then I'm going to take a little mucus scrape from the bottom of the fish. It's going to let me. So from the base around the fins, also take some from the gill area. Hopefully you can see that there's a little bit of mucus on the edge. Need a little bit more if I can. Oh, releasing lots of eggs. Hopefully you can see all the eggs in the bowl. <laughs> that was a bit of a surprise. So now we're going to take this mucus scrape and put it onto the glass slide. As you can see here, we've got the, there's a bit of mucus right on the edge and also we've got a lot of eggs. So it's possible that the eggs was actually causing the buoyancy issue with the fish. So it might be completely unrelated. So however, what we're gonna do, so we're gonna take our glass slide, and it's always good to have some kitchen roll because it might get a little bit messy. And then we're gonna take our cover slip, and then we're gonna try and use the cover slip. Sorry if you can't really see, it's quite hard to get the shot. Um, we're gonna use the cover slip to scrape the mucus off the edge of the plastic. We're gonna dab that onto there. We haven't really got too much of a sample because she wasn't very mucusy, which was quite good to see. It shows that she's not overproducing mucus. And then we're going to place the cover slip onto our glass slide, like so. And then, then we've got the microscope here. And then we're going to turn that on. So we've got our light coming from here and here. We're going to place the cover slip onto the stage like so and then we're going to look down the magnifying lens and we're going to see what we've found so i'm just checking the mucus now unfortunately we didn't get a very good scrape but so far i haven't seen anything moving about i've actually got some videos of some parasites that I identified using this microscope on the channel but they are probably about three years back um, from when I used to keep the koi but I'm hoping that I won't find anything and the buoyancy trouble or the slight issues that fish was having was due to the eggs I did manage to massage lightly some of the eggs out of the fish um, and they came out really quickly and really, really, really well. Um, and the fish is nice and happy now. And it hasn't shown any issues or problems for the past hour or so. 
So that's good to see. So I spent, in the end, I spent about 15 to 20 minutes looking through that scrape and I found nothing um, bad or no parasites at all. So unfortunately I can't show you any parasites today. I'm sure in the future I will be able to, um, but luckily for me I haven't got any parasites. Also I was really surprised that those eggs came out, possibly because I bumped the temperature and it is sitting at about 25 to 26 degrees. So it's possible that that temperature has helped her release her eggs. Um, and she isn't actually showing any of those buoyancy issues now. So I'm fingers crossed that the death was completely unrelated to the other fish um, and that the buoyancy issues or those slight problems she was having was just passing eggs. So fingers crossed that the cases are completely separated. But I've hopefully shown you how to use a microscope roughly and also hopefully I've just even tempted one of you to get your own microscope. As I say, I don't know too much about microscopes, but I say that they are an essential piece of the fish keeping repertoire. We have one of the moderators, um, Carla, who's actually just recently bought a new microscope about two or three months ago, I think. Sorry if I've got that wrong colour, but I know she definitely has one. Um, so if you need any help on deciding which microscope to get, just pop her a message. <laughs> Sorry, she's probably gonna get loads of messages now and really hate me, but if you need any help, you can always message me and I'll try and help you out um, on the Facebook group. But the fish are reacting well from the treatment, so fingers crossed that's all sorted, um, giving me a little bit more confidence, so I'm a bit happier. Um, thank you all for watching. Um, make sure you keep up with those water changes and remember, happy fish keeping.